Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process and for authors to learn valuable tips on producing and marketing your audiobooks. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today. I am going to talk about something that I am very passionate about in this episode, and it's something that comes up frequently in this podcast because it is something that is both really valuable and also something that is so often overlooked. We're going to talk about pre-production. Let's get started. Now, there are a lot of components that we do or elements that we're preparing during pre-production, and some of those we're not going to focus on so much today, like the casting process or the setup and preparation if an author is going to narrate their own book. Today, we're really going to focus on where the gold is in audiobook pre-production. The ironic thing to me is that Most audiobook producers, as far as I can tell, are not really paying attention to the pre-production aspect of the audiobook. And here I'm specifically talking about the opportunities, the gold that is in the preparation process. And I think the main reason why so many people miss out on this opportunity is just that they don't have that vision for what an audiobook can be how it can be leveraged. And I don't mean in any kind of negative way. I don't mean turning it into a sales pitch. But I do mean, how can we create a really great audiobook listening experience and at the same time, leverage that audiobook to build the connection between the author and their audience? Because I firmly believe that if an author is providing value in their content, if their book and their expertise is bringing something special to the world that will be helpful to their audience, then continuing that connection is only likely to help the listener or the reader have even more results in their life. Now, you may be thinking I'm only talking about nonfiction, but I'm not. Even in fiction, we have an entertainment experience, and many times we have messages that are being conveyed through the story that often will stick with us even more than in nonfiction titles. Because they're conveyed through story, we allow ourselves to sort of let down some of the external armor that we may carry around with us, the protection that we hold, because we're allowing ourselves to get immersed in the story. So what are the messages? What are the undercurrents? What are the values that the fiction work is also bringing forth and delivering to the listener that we can expand on? For fiction, it might be another book. With nonfiction, it might be some kind of other offering, maybe a coaching kind of offering or some other health and wellness benefits. There are so many possibilities. It's only just barely touching the surface. It can be anything from business, technology, to health and wellness. For children's titles, it might be values that you're presenting within the story that are important for a child to learn. It may be strictly entertainment And that's a value as well, helping them use their imagination, encouraging that, giving parents a time to have a little bit of a break when the kids are entertained in in an audio way. They're not relying on a screen, but they are being told a story. There are so many values for each piece of work that we're creating as audiobooks. And that's what sets the stage for what we're going to talk about, about pre-production. The first thing we want to really understand is, what is our goal for the audiobook? And that can be not just limited to the audiobook itself, but 
your whole publishing project? What's the goal for your book? What would you like your listeners to experience, to do, to learn? How can we create the deepest, most wonderful, enriched experience for them with your audiobook? These are the questions that build on the foundation of your project. So really, when I think about the project, I might lay the foundation as, what are your goals? And right above that would be what are the calls to action or what are the results that you would like your listeners to experience? Once those things are in place, then as we look at the manuscript and consider the listener's experience, we can better understand how we can help to achieve those goals. So let's dive in to some of the components that can help provide the experiences that we just described. We'll start with nonfiction because in many ways that's easier. Calls to action are the kinds of things that we would expect in a nonfiction title. Although you might be surprised how many nonfiction titles do not include any calls to action. And just in case you're questioning how important it is to have a call to action, why do we need to have calls to action? We are creatures of action. We move through our lives. We create stories about our own experience in our lives. And often, when we are diving into nonfiction material, we're either looking for some kind of change in our lives or we're looking for information that may be helpful as we grow and move forward in our lives. And so I think it is a natural thing to consider what actions we would like our listeners to take. When we're thinking more specifically about the audiobook and the calls to action in an audiobook, We are likely thinking in the realm of we would like them to come to our website Why that? Because usually at your website, you're going to have something more for them, some other additional way that they can grow themselves and with you, a way that they can continue to engage with your material, your expertise, and benefit from that in an even bigger way. So let's take a look at some of the things that we can do in a nonfiction title things that we would be looking for as we look over a manuscript that may be helpful in this process. The most obvious things are if you have visuals, any kinds of visuals, that could be images, charts, photos, whatever, something that you've chosen to put it into the book as a visual for a reason. Now, it's possible you've included it just for visual interest, that's okay. Not every visual necessarily needs to be narrated or described. But many times there are visuals that are there to enhance the experience or to provide additional information or just to present the information in a visual way. In any of those cases, just stop and think for a moment. Might my listener benefit from being able to see that image? The answer is likely going to be yes. And if it is, then is there any reason why you shouldn't put that image on your website, whether it's publicly available and easy to find, or whether you put it on a private page that is uh, hidden in your overall menu and just make it available to your audiobook listeners? And then in this episode, I just want to highlight one other item. Uh, There are other episodes where we go into more depth with more of the different kinds of things that you may be looking at. But for this episode, I want to just focus on the addition of things like if you have either exercises, meditations, uh, questions that you would like your listener to actually think about in the moment not just rattled off, but actually give them the experience of having the time with you to think about them. 
When you have materials like this in your audiobook, what a great gift it is to invite them to your website to be able to re-experience that in a written form while also using the moment of listening to the audiobook to experience it in an audio form. And here's another reason why this is so great. As most people now know, when we use different modalities for learning, when we both write something and hear it and maybe see it, by incorporating the different modalities for learning, we're actually making that learning much more integrated. We're able to retain it more fully. So if you have something powerful to share in audio and it can also be shared in a visual text way, that is a gift to offer your listeners. Let's take a short pause. We'll come right back and we'll talk about some of the things that we can do for fiction when we're looking at pre-production, mining that gold that is there. We'll be right back. Here at Pro Audio Voices, we love working with authors who have a big goal in mind. They really want to reach out to their audience around the world. We're here to help make that happen. It starts with our pre-production process, where we're evaluating and determining what elements of the audiobook we can leverage to both create an excellent listener experience for your listeners, as well as drawing them to your website to engage with you further. It continues on through the production process, making decisions that will enhance and support your big goals, as well as creating a great listener experience. But we don't stop there. Once the audiobook is live, we move on to helping you market your audiobook with the Audiobook Marketing Program. Come check us out at ProAudioVoices.com. To schedule a call to talk about your audiobook project, click on Get Started. And we're back. So let's take a look now at the opportunities in fiction titles. When we're doing our pre-production, when we're planning, there are several things that we want to consider in a fiction title. Unlike nonfiction, where we may insert invitations to the website throughout the book at various points, in fiction, that would interrupt the story. That would take our listeners out of the experience. And that is not something that we want to do. However, at the end of the book, We want to make sure that they have a way to stay with us, stay in the story. So number one is always make sure you include some, even if it's very short, some about the author and let them know how to find out more about what you're up to, to learn about other titles that you already have or what you're working on. If you blog That will all be on your website. And your website is always going to be your hub for information. It's the place where you retain control over the content that's there, unlike social media platforms where you are basically putting your content on someone else's platform and they have control. On your website, you retain control. So make sure in your About the Author that you include a link to your website. If you don't have a website yet, you can use something like your Amazon author page as a website temporarily, or if you need to rely on a platform like LinkedIn, you know, if that's appropriate for you, less appropriate in general for fiction than it is for nonfiction, but I'm just saying that you can use some other platform if you need to. However, I will also say there are options out there for authors to get low-cost websites that are very basic, and it's worth it to have a place where you can really maintain control over your own content and as a way to stay engaged with your audience. Some of my other top recommendations for planning out your audiobook production, this pre-production process for fiction authors is to include a sneak preview if you have another book available that is for the same target market. 
Even if that title is not in audio, that doesn't mean that you can't include a recorded sample from that book. And one of the great benefits of planning this out during pre-production is because when you make these decisions at the beginning, then you are going to have a much more efficient process and you're going to be able to get your narrator to do this work at minimal, if any, additional charge. And another one of my favorite things is doing a bonus interview with the author. Here's the way to do it. What I recommend for our clients is record a full interview, which might be, say, 20 or 30 minutes or even longer, and then use portions of it in different ways. So you put the full one on your website and you do the first portion of it as bonus material in your audiobook with an invitation to go to your website to see or hear the full thing. And then one last tip for this episode, and that is that whether it's fiction or nonfiction, if you have some great review quotes, whether they're editorial or from other experts in your field or other authors, and these may be quotes that you have at the beginning of your book, sometimes uh, we'll see that, especially in print books, If you have some of those, then why not have them recorded? Because you can then put your cover image on those, make them into little audiograms, and use that to help you promote your audiobook. And we're going to call that a wrap for today. I hope that you will be mining the gold of your audiobook production by spending the time and energy during pre-production to really make some great decisions and find the gold that is certainly there. Thanks so much for joining me. Please, please reach out to us at proaudiovoices.com if you have any questions about pre-production. This is something that we have really developed an expertise and a lot of experience around, and we love helping authors succeed. Have a great day. We'll catch you next time on Audiobook Connection. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at proaudiovoices.com. Again, thanks for being with us, and please join us next week.